unboxing video. Uh, we've got more than 1,500 lurkers here tonight. That's according to my grandson who has a, a program that measures the amount of lurkers that you can't even see here. They don't leave any indication of themselves because they are highly professional, very well-trained lurkers who have hacking programs and things that um, they don't leave any trace of their presence, but they do. For some reason, they show up to watch me. They watch me almost every night. And tonight we have a unboxing. If you watched my last video, you will see that we are going to show the anti-Hikaru device. Um, after I won the last game, you want to check. You might want to check out that video. Um, the, the word Nemesis came up, and it reminded me of this anti-Hikaru device. It just came today. Okay, this is the unboxing because it's still in the box. There was actually a larger box that's over there, and this was in the box too. Okay, we're going to unbox these things. And this is the this is the first thing we will unbox. Actually, we're just taking it out of the cellophane wrapper. And if we open that up, we will see what's inside. Oh my god, it's empty. I got ripped off or what? Oh, that's the hard case. It that that's a $32 value and you get it for free if you buy the if you pay $250 for what's in this box. At the Muse site, go to Muse and you can get this. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna open this box. Okay, you can see it right there. And in my camera, I have to move left to go right and right to go left, so it's a little bit complicated, but here they are. Two little things inside there. And you know what this is? It can measure what's inside your cranium inside your brain. It measures your neurological activity. I'm going to figure out how to work this out. You have to take them out of the boxes and that's the third step and then you connect them to your cell phone and I'm going to figure out some way to project that during my Twitch streaming and with this I predict by going inside my brain and understanding all the waves and everything that's happening inside there, I really predict, and I, do you think I believe I can beat Hikaru using this device? Do you think I really believe that? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But there's a possibility, and we'll see. That's the anti-Hikaru device, and I'm going to start using that. Um, don't miss that. It's going to be coming up probably tomorrow. So let's, without any more ado, let's go over to the leeches because my lurkers have shown up by now. They've been tweeting, they've been going on Facebook, they've been over at the just chatting section because they don't like to waste time, and now they're here because they know I'm starting. So that's the Black King, that's the White King, Click there for Lady Karma, and we have, guess what we have? We have black, and that means we're going to play that pawn up. I'm going to try to give you a good game here. You know, we're doing this boxing, uh, unboxing video, so we're going to put the, put the question to that bishop right away. If he takes this, it won't screw up our, our, our pawn structure too much. Um, I think the best thing to do, why not just move that thing out there? And I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay with this. I really think we're going to be fine. And I'm saying that with a lot of faith. I have no idea how the book is supposed to be on this opening, but we might have a new game on the board here, actually. I kind of think we do. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever done this before. And we're only four 
or five moves into the opening. That was supposed to be a queen spawn opening, but you can see he's taking a lot of time thinking. Now, the question is, should I take with the pawn or the queen? Big question. What looks best? What looks best? What looks best? I like with the pawn. I kind of think with the pawn I'm going to do okay because I want to oppose the advance of that pawn. And now I want to move this knight out here because I want to oppose a problem there. He can win a pawn, actually. But this is a kind of a gambit. Uh, I'm going to move here so that they can't win that pawn anymore. That pawn was kind of like free for him to take, but he kind of missed out. And I was playing a gambit there, but I guess it's not going to be a gambit anymore. It sounds a little bit like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Remember when she said, I don't think this is Cam Kansas anymore. I'm going to castle. Why should I waste any time? Let's get the king out of the center and see what's going to happen. Let the chips fall as they may later, as they say. Oh, I like that queen there. I think we should just go I'll go ahead and attack that queen. Should, should I move him here or here? If I moved him up here, you know, this was a fast game, and I didn't really calculate what was going to happen with that queen. Going to bring already over there and attack that queen. The queen might come to this side attacking this pawn, but if she does, I can bring this queen here and then up to here. I actually only have one queen, but... I think I'm going to bring the queen up to there and up to there because I got to be careful about this bishop coming into here and getting on the diagonal. My queen and my rook, but I don't think he's going to have time to do that because to protect that bishop, he would have to. Well, he could bring it up right now. Yeah, and he did. I'm going to have to bring this rook over. I don't want to bring him over here. It would be useless there. I'm going to bring him over here in the center. Then i got to get my queen off this file. But we're doing okay. I'm going to bring the queen back over into here. She protects that square against the knight and that square against the knight. Things are looking a little bit tight for us right now. But if we do this, we might be able to bring... He's going to bring his bishop. He's going to bring his um, rook down there. I can kind of see that coming. Is there any way I can prevent that? Yes, I can. I'm going to prevent it with that. And it's going to be tight here, really tight. Yeah, he's going to come up there. He's trying, he's trying to advance his pawn up here. And I just moved my knight there. We're going to see what happens here. This is a really, really, really tight and difficult opening. I wouldn't suggest that anybody try this at home. I'm at home, but that doesn't count. And I might just sacrifice. What can I sacrifice here? Should I sacrifice? I could move this pawn up, but no, I can't. Yeah, because these two knights are protecting each other. I might be able to... Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. I don't want to waste time. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I want to bring this bishop over here somehow. And I think moving that pawn up is what might do it for me. I gotta get that bishop out of there. I don't like that thing. But then he's gonna move his pawn up. I'm gonna have to bring the bishop here. He's gonna move that pawn up and make my knight move and then that knight's gonna be unprotected if unless I'm careful here. Now I'm threatening his queen. Now suddenly instead of a person on the defense, I'm suddenly a person with a little bit of offense, which 
is not to say I'm an offensive person, but okay, that's interesting. Um, now he can't move his pawn up, though. That's the thing. So now I'm free to come down here. That kind of saved me. He thought, well, uh, you know, but it was this pawn advancing that was killing me before. And now that pawn can't advance because the knight came there. Uh, that helped us a lot. Now if he moves that knight out of there, we instantly have to move this knight because that pawn's going to come up and try to win that knight again. But we really freed up our position. We're doing okay. I think on the clock we've got 2 minutes and 15 seconds. He's got 54 seconds. I kind of think our task right now, I don't know if I should trade off right away though. I'm going to come over here because I can take this pawn in some case, put him in check. I don't have to really trade off right now. Um, I can push his knight out here, and then his knight needs to go back, and then I can put him in check, win a pawn. Now I can't, um, but I can do this, and then I can check his pawn. I can check his rook, I mean. And I'm just playing the clock right now, you guys, just so you know what I'm doing. I'm not really trying to do anything really fantastic here. I'm just playing the clock. And that puts him in check. And, you know, I always get in trouble in the end games like this. I just play the clock, and then he does something dastardly and beats me. Um, but hopefully that won't happen this time. He's got seven seconds left, and I've got his rook pinned. He's got one second left. I'm going to come over here so that I can go down and check him. Okay, well, you know, that was an interesting game. We did the unboxing, and then we played a pretty solid Carol Can, and we won on time, minute and 33 seconds against zero seconds. That's not bad. Let's go and take a look at the analysis board because a lot of times I say a bunch of stuff. It happens a lot on these videos. Well, it doesn't happen that often, but it happens every once in a while. I say a bunch of stuff and none of it's true. <laughs> I don't like to admit that, but every once in a while it, it is like that. But I think this game might actually turn out that I was um, a little bit like Nostradamus, uh, predicting what was going to happen. Um, you know, we did do a gambit, and in a gambit, he's going to have some advantages like this. Um, but look at that right at the end. You see that line right there, that horizontal line? That's kind of like, um, they have a word for that in medicine on that heart monitor thing. Wasn't there a movie about that? What do they call that? The, um, they have a, the flat line. It was called flatliners. And that's the flat line because he was, he was really losing there on time. And we had the game in the bag, actually. So let's just do a quick recap on this. Uh, okay, that's a normal queen spawn opening. How are we doing? Let's just check here. Oh, look, we're doing fine. The little ball there is good. So if you want to match up bishops like that, you can do that. You, you already can remember that, that it's a valid opening. It's really valid so far. It's still valid. If you look over here and right there was not so good, we should have done another thing. What should we have done? Let me see. If you push right up here on Lee Chess, you push this, it'll, it'll show you the next move. Oh, well, that was the idea. I said to put the question in that bishop, and then I forgot about it. That would have been excellent. Take the bishop. If he came down here and took the pawn, you just move the knight out. Um, 
and I would have had a better game. But that's not how the game went. So let's just continue how the game went. I moved the pawn up. <laughs> I'm making a lot of like question mark moves. Remember, I debated a little bit about that, and I was thinking, well, I want to counteract that thing from moving up. But he he instantly could have won a pawn there, but he missed it. And then we took there, and Leach has the same, the same. Oh, no, we didn't. Then I took there, yeah. Okay, and now you see, we're back almost zero, so we're doing okay. I mean, okay, yeah, we were up and down a little bit, but we're doing all right. And in chess, it's all about just, you know, winning and doing good. There he screwed up. I saw that bit. I saw that bishop coming down there just a, like a second too late. But then we reacted okay. He he had like a good game there for a while. But you remember, we were maneuvering around, you know, doing some stuff there. He was threatening some stuff. He moved the pawn up there. And remember, it was when he moved his his knight up there, uh, right there, that we screwed up again. <laughs> According to the the Lee chess, it went way up there. But you were just having fun, and we did win this game. So you know, as the old saying goes, nothing succeeds like success. And I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but Back in the day, that was a pretty popular saying. And we we actually just were flatlining him here now. That's that's a technique in Lee Chess. It's called flatlining. Um, if you look up here at the clock, there's just like a little number there. He has a minuscule number of seconds, and we have a really copious cro chronomatic amount down here. Did I use the right word? Is that chronomatic? No, chronometer, right? Chrononometric, I should have said, chrononometric. Chronomatic would probably be related with color somehow. But anyway, we have a chrono, chronomet, I'm not gonna try to say that anymore. And he took there, and we were just playing the clock here. That's it. Okay, so we did the unboxing and we won a game. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time for another Steinich instructional video. Bye-bye.